lot of books. And then I go around buying books with my own money. And a lot of congratulations to my wife and my two children for supporting this idea. I was just, in fact, you were taking words out of my mouth. I was going to wonder uh, how you acquire the books. I mean, who funds the operation? Actually, it's just my salary and my wife's salary that funds it. Mm. Yeah. Although we are in non-profit, mm. but um, the revenue is not coming in, so we're just doing it from our own uh, salary. What are some of the difficulties you face? Um, maybe getting these books here and uh, serving the students, especially students uh, since we're in university town. Well, the difficulty is transporting the book from the U.S. Mm. And the problem with the customs, getting through the customs in Douala, and um, the difficulties of uh, paying the rent, the electric bill, uh, the employees. Because you see, we got membership to get into the library. Mm. That is 200 francs, which basically uh, <laughs> is just basically free. Uh -huh. uh, so the, the membership cannot even pay and one of the employees, mm. so everything is still from our own uh, cost. Have you ever thought of the maratorium? We're talking about taxation now, we're talking about customs at the ports. Have you ever thought about that? Oh, yeah, I do. I fight with them every day. Mm. Uh, I got people say I have to pay taxes, which uh, they come uh, knocking at the door every time. Uh, I got custom officers who say, hey, they have no children in school, so they don't care what I'm doing, mm. they just need their bribe. Bribery is just extremely high, mm. and so it's really frustrating. Mm. I'm almost coming to a point of uh, closing down. Mm. Um, if I don't have a headway, I may shut the doors because it's getting too much into my own pocket. Shutting the doors, a public library, the first of its kind in a university town. Don't you think this would be a disservice to the population? Seven years are so many years. I have no support. I have appealed to the government, I have appealed to private individuals. Surprisingly enough, the Americans are doing their best to help us. Mm -hmm. But the Cameroonians, they just give me hard times. Mm -hmm. So um, the way things are going, I'm almost certain that I may close it down. Students who've met, people who've met, using the library. When you see these people, streaming in like the population we're having here now what crosses your mind well that's the only courage that's the only reward i do have um we just left other schools we came from kingston st terrace uh, sase in a famous school like sase college which is really one of the famous schools in cameroon actually i helped them to reopen their library okay. the library have been closed for years okay. uh, we send them a good thousand number of books and we were there last week, and the library is functioning. That is the only thing keeping me uh, running. But sooner or later, I may be on the minus. I'm running almost on red. You seem to have embarked on a book reading crusade because you are not only touching on activities in the library, you've gone as far as the blind. You donated books to the Blue Blind Center. Yes. You're going to meet, uh, you're going to orphanages, and you're giving out books. What, what satisfaction do you derive from this kind of activity? Well, looking at my own background, that um, when I grew up, I did not get the opportunity to read. My parents were extremely poor, I was poor, and I found that where I am today is because of books. Mm -hmm. So I look at these young minds, and I'm like, if you give them the opportunity, they too may benefit, mm -hmm. as I did. And that's the whole. And in the past, we Africans keep on blaming the whites for not helping Africa. And the question is, what are we doing to help Africans? Mm. Uh, I've been in the U.S. now 30 years, mm. and I feel that I owe this country. And not just Cameroon, I owe Africa. Mm. Uh, we are doing some work in Nigeria, we are doing some work in Ghana, and we are doing some work in South America, spreading books. Mm. And I think uh, books, that is a good weapon. Dr. Fonge, you did organize a seminar in the University of Boya and you have been involved in a number of things. Uh, could you tell us exactly what other activities attract you here and why the interest? My whole vision, this building, we already acquired a building that we're going to break it down and come up with a complex that will serve the community. My vision is to have what I call a community center where we're going to get, like right now, we hold seminars on diabetes, hypertension, um, 
<clears throat> domestic violence. Um, I want uh, some individuals who may want to come here and uh, uh, do whatever they want to do for the good, the goodness of the community. That's my vision. We need to get the internet in here. Uh, we want to get, a, this should be a place where people can come and do things like retreat, to read, mm. um, to, like last time we had a 50 year anniversary, people that have been married for more than 50 years. Right. So the vision is to get the community involved. So I'm looking for a community center mm. that will be so many activities taking place. Mm. If you were to say a word to the Cameroon government, what would you say? Well, my challenge with the Cameroon government is that they should support those of us who are trying to contribute our own share to the community. They should try to lessen the taxes, the harassment, the government officers coming in here wanting um, people to pay unnecessary taxes. I think the government should support. We are here to help the community. We are not here to destroy the community. But we are getting no support, no moral support, nothing from uh, uh, the, the government. Dr. Fonge. These books, you get them from the United States and ship them here. Now, if you were to talk to the United States government, what would you tell the government? First, I need to give critics to Laura Bush, the first lady. Uh, she wrote me a personal note uh, supporting what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm from Texas, which we are proud of the state. Mm -hmm. The governor of Texas also wrote a note to me supporting what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, the president of my school, Dr. Hodges, my immediate boss, Dr. Sue, these individuals actually see what I'm doing and they're giving me all the necessary tools. So to the people of the United States, I will say congratulations to them for helping us. In mine, it's a terrible thing to waste. And a child getting a book is the best offer you can give to a child. And what would you tell the community uh, yourself? What I need to tell them is to encourage your children to come in here. Mm. Actually, the, the building is funny looking, but inside this building, there's a gold mine. What I need the community to do is to come here and explore the knowledge in here. I, I, I want to say, Dr. Fonger, that this is actually, uh, this arrangement is a tremendous success. Uh, but I want to find out uh, your wife's impression about what you do here? She's very supportive. Initially, she thought I was going to do it for a month. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I talked to her this morning. Mm -hmm. She's leaving Houston to New York, and she'll be here tomorrow mm -hmm. to join me in some of these uh, activities. The other day, uh, your son uh, put in place some gifts for the Handicap Center. Um, just to find out from you, uh, what part does he play in this whole arrangement? My son was born in the United States. Um, when we had the first seminar on diabetic screening, he was part of it, and I never knew he was taking note of it. Uh, he is in Vanderbilt University, a private university in Tennessee, and his essay going to the university was about the seminar she had in Cameroon. So now he went back to Vanderbilt and met a club of students over there. They contributed some money, and they bought uh, toilet articles like bathing soap, uh, toothbrushes for the handicaps, and I mean for the orphanage in my 14. So he's in full support. Same with my daughter Susan. As for me, I don't. Yeah, what what he is actually saying is the truth. Mm. I myself, many business people do complain about this taxation issue, mm. and uh, if the government don't do something, he will likely close it and. We will be the one to suffer, and then our younger brothers that are coming mm. will be the one to suffer because this actual this place actually help us. Mm. Like um, most students, they find it more, much more easier coming mm. and reading here. Mm. Like uh, for example, in cities, many cities, at times where there is a lot of noise, you mm. find yourself keep rushing to come and read here. Mm. Yeah. So if actually they close this place, it might not um, actually be a, a hamper to him but to us mm. some of us that actually is a place. Mm. So I I can recommend that the government should mm. actually reduce the taxes because this issue of taxi it's is a problem. really a problem. Not only to him but yeah. to all Cameroonians. Now um what are the problems you find here in this library? Um, 
actually as uh, I was just telling you mm. a while ago, the problem is that first of all the place is uh, not actually very big. Mm. They need to to increase it to uh, to, to to make it large mm -hmm. so that it can accommodate many students. That's right. Yes, and uh, as concerns the book, there are, there are many books here, mm -hmm. so I can't say the books are not uh, actually available. Mm -hmm. In the space, program of space. Now, are you by implication saying there are times you get here and find out that uh, there are many students and as such it's difficult uh, for them to study conveniently or something? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. At times you actually come here, you find that uh, the place is saturated, mm -hmm. especially when they are writing exams. Mm -hmm. You know, when during that moment students find themselves somehow like reading like never before. Yes. Uh-huh. They become more serious. Yes.